Thank you very much. What a great turnout here in Tampa. A little wind and rain isn't going to slow down the Faith and Freedom Coalition. I am delighted to be back here with my friend uh, Ralph Reed. I've known Ralph a long time. He's been a tremendous uh, leader in the, as a movement conservative now for so many years and being able to get people uh, of faith and people of conservative values involved in the political movement. And thank you for coming all over uh, the country to be here for this, uh, this important event. Because I can tell you as a candidate uh, for office many times in elected office 21 years, it doesn't matter how much money you have and how good ideas you have and how hard you work, you have to have people that believe deeply in you, uh, that are willing to work hard whether it's 30 degrees outside or 95 in the shade, doing the hard work of freedom if you're going to win those elections. Thank you for standing up for those conservative values and being willing to get conservative people elected to office. I appreciate, Ralph, uh, uh, very much the work that the Faith and Freedom Coalition did uh, when I ran for governor in 2009 in Virginia. Uh, we actually had a real landslide. We won with 58% of the vote, unlike that 323. But uh, I can tell you that 323, actually after the recount it was 360. But I can tell you, that one-eighth of one vote per precinct that I won Attorney General is the only reason I'm standing here. Now, I've never met that one-eighth of, one of a vote person, but I understand it's very short. But the point is, every vote does count. Your advocacy in getting people of faith and believe in family values and traditional values uh, and the Founders' principles of limited government, getting them energized into the polls this November could determine the course of the country for four years and therefore the course of the world for a long time to come. So please, work hard and get this job done. There's a lot of people that depend on it. You heard Ralph talk about my role as a veteran, my daughter serving in Iraq. When she was in Iraq, that was the same year I got elected as Attorney General. And while there was only 45% of the people that came out to vote for Attorney General and Governor in 2005 in Virginia, 70% of the people in Iraq that same year came out to vote after 25 years of the tyranny of Saddam Hussein, women with the blue thumbs crying in the street. You remember those images on TV? Because they tasted freedom for really the first time in their life and got to pursue and participate in democracy. If they could do that while IEDs and snipers were imperiling their path to the polls, there's no excuse for us, is there? To be able to get people to the polls uh, in this great land of liberty. Well, listen, I am uh, thrilled that you're here and I'm thankful that you're standing on those timeless values that have made America great. I can tell you, I, you're looking at a guy who grew up an average middle class kid in Fairfax County, and I now have the same job held by Thomas Jefferson and Patrick Henry. Isn't that a great country? You remember all the great words, give me liberty or give me death, that was Henry. Jefferson uh, putting those immortal words 236 years ago, recognizing that our rights don't come from the whims of government at any level, but they come from Almighty God, from the Creator. They're inalienable. And the government is supposed to be instituted to protect those liberties. So that's what this campaign is about. Protecting individual freedoms. Standing up for traditional values like traditional marriage and the sanctity of innocent human life. Those are the values that, have, uh, that have, we've stood on for a long time. But we're also, we're also at a crossroads in America. And I think this is one of the reasons that you're here. Uh, unemployment so high that 23 million Americans don't have access to the American dream, unemployed or underemployed. A debt of $16 trillion. Ladies and gentlemen, this is killing our country from within. It is unsustainable. It is immoral. And we need a new leader that will have the honesty to look the American people in the eye and say we can't afford this anymore. This is not the right way to steward the country's resources. And I believe with uh, Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan, you do have men of faith that do honor the Founders' vision, that do embrace those traditional values, that are fiscal conservatives, that will lead and not blame and actually get this great country out of debt and back to work. That's what we need right now for leadership in the United States of America. So I am uh, I'm just delighted to be here to offer you a few, few words of encouragement. First and foremost, to say thank you for what you've done for people like me and countless others that embrace those conservative uh, social and fiscal values. Uh, but what you're going to do this next 90 days, it's so, uh, 70 days, is so very, very 
important. First president, of course, was a Virginian. Uh, <laughs> George Washington. I grew up uh, about a mile from Mount Vernon. How many of you been there? Inspiring place. He left that place and only saw it once for eight years because he loved his country so much. You remember the picture, and I have it hanging behind my desk in my governor's office. 19, in, 18, in 1777 to 1778, turning point in the Revolutionary War, George Washington on his knees at Valley Forge. This country was born on its knees. We should always remember that. It was divine providence that Jefferson appealed to in the final verse of the Declaration of Independence. So Washington said something incredibly important in his first inaugural address, and I want to leave you with this. He said, the propitious smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right which heaven itself has ordained. I think Washington wanted those words to be repeated. He said it in his first address. And what that means is character does count. Values do matter. There are certain things that are eternally true. And those principles are the one that the conservative party will stand on and will win on. And with your help, we'll have a conservative leader that'll change America and get us out of debt and back to work this November. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you.